What's up? Film study time. I've got 15 plays from State's win over Southeastern Louisiana in their season opener on Saturday. Now, it's offense and defense. It's some of it. I'm going to try to get it in the best chronological order I can get it in. And if you're watching this on YouTube, down at the bottom, you know, on the timeline, I'll put some timestamps for, you know, which play is which in case you want to switch around. Two or three things since it's watch film time of the year. Number one, the players and coaches that are actively doing it now, they know this stuff better than I do. <laughs> Especially the coaches, okay? they Most of those guys have forgotten more X's and O's than I know. And my purpose in doing this is to have some fun with it and really get a little bit of a glimpse of just how much these players are processing in a short period of time. It's not easy, okay? Uh, so that's number one. And number two, there's good and there's bad in every game for every team and just about for every player. No player has ever played a perfect game. Uh, some have been close. No team has ever played a perfect game. Some teams have lost games when they played really well and did good things, and some teams have won when they did a lot of bad things. So there is some, you know, th there will be some successful plays versus some that weren't so successful in here, but you kind of get a look, a little bit of a glimpse at some things that were going on. With that said, let's get it started. Here's your first third down of the ball game. He's going to Try to hit Roberson here on this little um, kind of inside release vertical up the hash. The motion to two by two with the tight end Harmon. Get him open. Have to throw it in that window quickly and just miss him. Uh, so I just thought we'd take a look at it. Um, I didn't, you know, it's not a perfect throw, no, but it um, wasn't that bad either. All right, so they line up four on the front, two in the box. So give you a six man box, right? And you motion out of three receivers here to uh, two by two. So it's pretty clear you got two up top, hashing outside, you're gonna have two down here and then single back in the backfield. And um, when they motion, you get a little defensive change. Uh, we'll seen this a million times, right? Motion and two by two. So one safety's kind of coming down, dropping down. Another's backing up, getting in the middle of the field. He's gonna have deep third. So it's either gonna be, you know, man free with free safety in the middle and man, man underneath or you know, cover three, right? Unless they rotate out of it where they'll drop, have deep thirds, and he'll have a deep third. And that's what they actually do. They play a zone. And you can see that if you watch the corner at the bottom. So on the snap, he turns, he's running out of there. And this is not man-to-man. -man. It's just this safety has flat responsibility, and he sees that tight end. They may be matching it up. I don't know. So uh, the route pushes inside, gets free release, and he's just automatically right here in this void in front of the safety, uh, behind the corner on the hash, and that's what Will's looking at the whole time. The other thing you're getting is a little uh, push him outside, inside release from Tulu up top, running vertical as well. So, you know, if you have here and here, then you could play off the safety, right? Whichever way, whichever one he doesn't take. And Will may be thinking, I don't know what they tell him to read is, but what he may be thinking is with the ball on the right hash that this is a quicker, tighter, easier throw. And it just it kind of gets high on him. And sometimes when you have to hurry up your mechanics just a little bit, you rush it just a little bit, that ball will jump high on you. And I think that's what happens right there. It just gets high. You know, it, it's not entirely, completely, you know, uncatchable, but I don't think the receiver's quite ready for the ball. Like when he turns his head, the ball's already on him just about. You see this? You know, so maybe a little quicker than he expected. And I also don't think Roberson really finds the ball. Like, if he finds the ball in the air right now, he's going to have a chance to react and still go get it. And he just couldn't quite get up there. Um, so, you know, right read. The other thing, too, like we mentioned, so with that safety in the middle of the field, it's one of those where, like, if you were playing off of him, if he showed you early that he was going to come out of the middle of the field and come over here, or, you know, then you might make the decision go the other way. It could just be that he hangs there and reacts to the throw, which I think is probably what happened. And this being on the right hash, I've got him right now. And probably a learning opportunity too, you know, you're never too old to learn stuff, is one little shoulder fake to this guy, one little eye, you know, really look at him, keep your eyes there, may draw that safety here, and then you flip back over here and throw Tulu a touchdown up the other hash. But look, it's easy to pick this stuff apart when you can slow it down and freeze it. In real life, this is how fast it's happening. Safety's in the middle, boom, I'm gonna hit him right now for a first down. The ball just gets a little high on you. Um, it is 
like I say, you know, it's one of those where if I think if the receiver finds it early enough, like, boom, I see the ball now. As soon as I turn my head, I find the ball. I still think he's got a chance to go up and get it. He just didn't quite see it until it was already on him. So the timing a little bit off and the throw's not right in his gut, and uh, so it's incomplete. Here is a delay release by their tight end, and uh, they're going to complete it, and then State's going to come in here and uh, force a fumble. Release the running back on the wheel, late release tight end, dump it to him. They got yards. And Buki knocks it out, recovers it. Uh, excellent play. Uh, look at the design. You know, this team, Southeast Louisiana, they they were, um, in terms of personnel and packages and stuff, a little different than what we see just because they really use tight ends and lots of different receiver packages. So there he is. He's the only receiver on the, um, basically the short side of the field. The ball's just, you know, outside of middle there to the left. And then three receivers wide. You look how State's kind of lining up against this. Three down, three down linemen. You got three linebackers here, one already split out, and that's Jet. And because there's no receiver out here, you got a tight end. The, the corner on that side, Furge, has already walked down. And so what State's going to do is they're going to play, it, it almost is like quarters coverage, which is quarter, quarter, half deep. It's three deep. It's just that, you know, um, this player, uh, excuse me, i get you right here. This player is responsible for half of the field deep. This player quarter, and this player quarter of the field deep. They call it quarter, quarter, half coverage. So you wind up with three-man rush, five underneath, and three on top. It might be a four-man rush, but I think it's five-man. Let's take a look here. Now it becomes four-man rush. Okay, so <clears throat> Page comes in, he becomes the fourth rusher. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and so you get um, four underneath and then three deep with a four-man rush. It's just kind of how that, that works. And so look at the route concept. It's like vertical, uh, outside, vertical, up, vertical across to the middle. The running back sprints out of there and wheels up the sideline. And the purpose for that is to pull the corner, that outside coverage, out of there so that you can delay release this tight end in space and it works because right in front of Bookie, even though he's in zone coverage, if you'll watch Watson, when he sees the tight end block, see that? When he sees this happen and he's not out, this is very intentional. Now he's turning to go back to get in coverage, see? And when he turns, now he sees him block, he goes back to get in coverage. Watch what happens. He's out, and now the tight end releases, and he's wide open on the delay. And so you're able to hit him with a whole lot of space. And now how are you going to make up for it is come up there and make the tackle. Good design, but uh, it's just a player making a play. I think we got another look at it here. You can kind of see how he gets his hand in there. Yeah, this is a good look at it. So catches the ball. Watch the right arm of Watson on the tackle. Boom, knocks the ball out and go get it. You're gonna get screen pass here on second and seven, complete it right here in the middle, turn it into a big run down the field with blockers out in front. So let's watch some blocking here. Coverage doesn't matter, they rush four, <clears throat> turn one loose. Now, you know, on a screen, um, generally, you're turning those guys loose on purpose. And right here with Cole and LaSoya getting out in front, and I'm, I'm sure it's a call uh, on the line in terms of who's covered and who's not. I don't know that, but I just kind of figure, you know, you got a tackle covered, and obviously you got a tackle covered here with outside rush. But um, right now their front is sort of shaded away from LaSoya, you see? They're shaded over here to the left. So right now he's uncovered. I just know he's one of the ones that gets out along with the center. And so they, they pick up the four-man rush, push it to the outside, and turn the inside loose, turn one guy loose on the inside, get two out in front. So this is by design. Turn them loose. We're going to complete it behind the line of scrimmage. We've got two blockers out in front, and we're getting the ball to uh, Woody right here. But you see kind of what's happening. This guy gets in the way. I think he's actually reading it. You hadn't really blocked him down the field or out, and so he's flowing back into what he sees. That's a pretty good play by big guy here. I think he's reading it, seeing it, and just about gets a hand on this and blows the play up. Once he doesn't do it, though, here we go. All right, so Lasoya is up first. Uh, look a guy up, first one that shows, get him, good job. 
Next up, Cole Smith, lead him down the field, look at him, look one up, <clears throat> find the next guy, get him to the next level, boom. It's an excellent job here too. This block's been going on for a while from Harmon. So there's three teammates opening this deal. You got a safety coming over, Woody's job, the first one unblocked as the running backs make him miss, makes him miss down the field and uh, just about gets it in the end zone, doesn't quite. Takes a shot at the end, doesn't quite get it in there. And then you come down and score here on the goal line. You don't get a great look at it here, but Woody's gonna butt heads with a guy. And uh, I mean, it's a heck of a collision. Here it comes, boom, just run right through him. Uh, touchdown. I think they gave us an end zone look at the screen play there. You can see the guys kind of leading it out in front. Here we go. Let's see, that Harmon? Yeah, see, so Harmon came from the other side of the, of the field to go look up his guy. He's got a, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously a specific player on that side of the field. He's looking up and goes to him. LaSoya first, Cole, Harmon. Watch this shot right here. Boom. Not able to get it in. All right, so here is uh, their only scoring drive of the day, and they started it by converting a third and 20 with a screen pass. Watch this screen play right here. Uh, we all saw it, four man rush, got three blockers out in front, a couple missed tackles, including on the back end, and they get it across that yellow line for a first down. So, you know, there's a couple things about it, just so you see, it's the guard, center guard, who eventually release and they're all downfield to block, only the tackles, versus a four man rush. They were screening all day on third down. State. I don't know if it's twist or if it's just the way it worked out, but Russell pushes inside, and so Pickering comes around the edge and almost runs right into this screen throw, uh, but just can't quite get there, but overruns it a little bit. So uh, your four that rushed are out of the play, and now the guards and, and the center are all out in front of the play. Here we go. Now, first thing happens, so Jet's kind of coming underneath. He wants to take on the block, but this is just – Running back's got a head of steam. It's going to make him miss back to the inside. The other thing that happens is, so here comes another linebacker, Page, and if you look, he's having to avoid the referee. So he's, because of where the ball carry is, everybody's kind of taking, you know, this is a little bit of a poor angle considering the play. This is a little bit of a poor angle too, but you're because of the angle, he's trying to get around the referee and get to the ball carrier and can't do it. So. Everybody said, well, there's a missed tackle, but he's working around the ref. And then the safety misses a little bit of a slight angle, but uh, too many misses on third and 20. And that actually got their drive started right there. All right, so going sweep into the boundary. And one of the things that we talked about in the game on that one, it's just one drive where the defense had a little trouble with the edge. And, you know, there's always reasons for it. And it, a lot of times it's never <clears throat> in actuality what it kind of looks like. Uh, to the naked eye unless you really study it. Coaches see it, but maybe we don't always. But if you look, this is one where they actually lined up with double tight ends, one on the line and one hip. Okay, and then they're also going to motion another player out here on the edge. And then on the snap of the ball, both guards are going to eventually pull around and lead this run as well. So they so, so let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Left hash. So it's all now you motion out. And so now you've got one, two, three skill players, two big tight end blockers. Okay, and then keep in mind, again, you're going to add four and five with two um, guards that are going to pull in there. And if you notice, um, when, when the motion happens, there's not a ton of adjustment for state. It, it, there's a, a, just kind of a rotation. Uh, you know, he softens up, he softens up, safety walks down on the weak side. But just pre-snap formation, you got four on the line of scrimmage, three at the next level that are all shaded over to this side of the field, away from where the ball is going, but away from where all these blockers are going, right? So when they go toss sweep, just on the snap, if you were to look at defenders that are lined up on the other side of the hash, you've got one, two, three, and then the fourth is all the way inside here. See, so they kind of have you by, if they're going to go that way, they've kind of got you by numbers on the pre-snap. Pre-snap, uh, or here's the snap. So tight ends down inside on the end. Next tight ends up on next level. 
back is up on the corner. So there are those. And you can already see, <clears throat> here go your pullers. One and two are coming around as well. Gonna lead it out in front. So there's your, there's your edge. The edge has been set by the tight end block on the end. And now you've got others who are now coming around the edge with one corner coming down. And I felt like the corner here, Ferg's did a pretty good job of trying to get to the ball carrier. He beats the back. I think, you know, honestly, if we're being honest, he's held. You don't always get called when you hold, but he's held right there and that helps him. And then he gets around his feet and just checks him up, but doesn't make the tackle. But, you know, again, look at the, the blockers. We got two linemen coming up in the hole. We got a tight end down on your linebacker on the next level. The edge is sealed. And so it really leaves him, you know, furge, and that's just about it. Gets underneath it, doesn't actually make the play, holds him up, <clears throat> and they're on the next level. So it's just an example of how they use some pre-snap stuff to get to the edge on that one drive. Here's one I talked about in the uh, sort of the verbal breakdown. You get a, a deep post from Justin Robinson on the you know far end of the formation, you know, wide right. Underneath, you get a sort of an out into the void to pull the safety up. This guy backs and comes up, and that's what you get the uh, open post. We'll look at it. You kind of miss it right here, but it's sure enough an opportunity, and there's a couple things that were neat about this play to me. And right here, when I was watching it live from the press box, I'm kind of looking at it at this angle. <clears throat> and watching it live, I felt like that um, maybe Justin Robinson gave up on the ball a little bit early, I thought. Maybe it was more catchable. But then when you see where the ball lands, you know, it's back there on the number. So, you know, what it shows me is that, you know, he's running this post at an angle that's going to take him over here to the base of the goal post. And the ball, while it's on time and in the right kind of vicinity, it had kind of leaked on Will and had gone back away. So it's over here on his outside. That's why I guess he gave up on it. So he just barely missed what you know, it was going to be a wide open touchdown, but it is a perfect read and a pretty strong throw. He then, you know, he flicks his wrist, goes 46, between 45 and 50 yards in the air and didn't put a ton of air under it. Um, <clears throat> having a tight end on the line of scrimmage on third and one over here is what allows you to get people open for touchdowns like this a lot. It's kind of like if you were to have, let's say, a fourth and one and the whole defense is up on line of scrimmage playing zero coverage, thinking they're definitely going to run the ball fourth and one, and they give you the opportunity to throw it up top. Well, see, this is a third and one where because you have a tight end on the line, <clears throat> single back, they've got to respect the, you know, the idea that you're probably going to run this thing most likely. So three down, they're in a 3-3, three, three, but three down, walk one up. Two others, okay, so now you're at six in a box and really a seventh close enough to defend the run. So when you make this a four-man route with all those guys in there, you get a dig from the tight end, okay? So it gives you an option on this side. And when, even though he's a flat player, he sees pass, he, he drops to be in flat coverage, you're past him on the, just on the route concept. Creed is up and you get in the corner's face and run. And what happens is this player safety is who Will Rogers is reading, I presume, because I think as soon as he sees him, you know, begin to think to jump on that out route, uh, that's when he throws it over his head and tries to throw a touchdown right there. And you had it, but it's an excellent design. Titan does that, uh, gets him open for you. You see this happening up here. You do have flat underneath, but by this point, he's already made the decision, Will has, if, if this safety back here stays or comes up, I'm throwing it over his head to Justin Robinson, and this is the right read, and uh, you just miss an opportunity. But when you put that on film, everybody sees it, and they're gonna go, you know, anybody, Arizona, anybody watching this is gonna go, hey, look, Will Rogers is gonna hit this about nine out of 10 times. This just might be the 10th. And so on, in the future, on third and one, we see tight end, we gotta respect the idea they may throw it as well. It's not just an automatic run. There is a lot happening on this play. And uh, this is the one where Whittemore speed motion across, runs the wheel route for a touchdown that he catches here on the other side. There's some really cool stuff happening here. And they send a guy with him like he's trying to match him in man, but it's zone coverage everywhere else. Play fake, safety goes with the vertical and you hit him wide open. Um, let me show you what I, I noticed here in watching this. 
So first of all, uh, stay with the tight end, three receivers to the right side of the field, pre-snap. And so their pre-snap formation, three down, three linebackers, there's six in the box, and they line this safety or nickel player over the slot. And whether he's slot corner or what, I don't know. But this is zone coverage. This is a cover two zone, two deep safeties, flat players who, you know, they decide if they're up or back based on if they're threatened or not. Okay, and then underneath zone, not just three, but actually four underneath because they drop one. They are only going to rush three. So this is straight up second and ten out in the field. They're rushing three, playing cover two zone right here. But the only difference is they've got some sort of tag, it looks like to me, unless this player is making a mistake. If he's doing what's called, then it's some sort of tag where he's manning up with this guy in the slot, being the only difference in the formation, right? So watch what he does. It's zone, but when Creed goes in motion, he's running with it. Defender's going with it. We see that. And still, they're only going to rush three. But watch what happens when Will Rogers makes a play fake. If you could kind of, and I'll rewind it some, we're going to watch this player who, if he is playing Whittemore in man-to-man, -man, then if he releases and runs a wheel, then he ought to run with him, right, if he's playing him in some sort of man. And, you know, maybe he's not. But if he, if he is, he would. But watch what happens right here. As soon as Will Rogers gets the snap and turns to, he looks like he's going to give to Woody Marks on a counter play. Marks is stepping here, coming back this way. We got a puller coming. It looks like it's going to be a counter play. It's a run fake all the way. Well, his eyes are on it. And when he sees the run fake, watch him hesitate. Boom. See this? Like, this play fake, this is why you do it. This play fake, again, theoretically, if they've got some sort of man tag in their zone coverage for him to run with Whittemore, if that's what it is, then this run fake that's going on right here has forced his, because of his eyes, to stop. He stutters right here thinking, the run's coming at me. Takes his eyes off the receiver. Look at him. Step forward. See that? He stepped forward, and as soon as you're off the play fake, He's reacting, trying to now get turn around and run with Whit Whittemore, and it's too late, way too late over here. And so Whittemore's gone right on by him. Next time we see him, he's got the ball in the end zone. Now, here's the other thing that's happening. Because it's a zone coverage call, Justin Robinson is inside release and threatening the safety vertical. The corner, who's got a flat you know, zone responsibility, stays out here and passes him off and lets him go. And so the safety who's up here, who could have gotten over here and made a play on Whittemore, he can't because he's got Justin Robinson right in his face. And if you're Will Rogers, you turn to read this, that safety is who you're looking at. And if he stays inside on the hash, which he does, I'm going to throw the ball up for a, a touchdown on a wheel route because they busted their coverage. And see, so that's what happened. You know, there's your safety and nobody running here with him. So the play fake, very intentional, and it gets him wide open. Here is Nathaniel Buki Watson being Nathaniel Buki Watson. Inside the tackle, split them straight to the quarterback. Big sack on third and seven. This is early third quarter. Uh, it sort of set the tone for the defense. Defense came out of the locker room at halftime. It was just dominant really the rest of the way. Uh, kind of like you hoped you would be. Um, Five-man protection for them. He's inside of the end. He's basically, it's like he's attacking this gap between guard tackle to set the um, you know set this inside twist right so we're bringing him inside I'm gonna set him up trying to get inside pressure but he does more than set it attacks it get skinny split him go make a play um, I gave you a behind angle here you can really see it see their splits a little bit outside Look at him get skinny, dip that shoulder, and then just physically get through there. All right, watch this route. They're going to speed motion Tulu, release him in the flat after play fake. Tight end's going to down, delay release, be your next level. And the next level receiver is Justin Robinson coming from the other side. And what they're actually going to end up doing is hitting Robinson right here. Uh, at that next level. But the thing that is happening is you're getting a play fake 
to the left of the quarterback where he's going to turn. We're going to look like we're sliding this thing this way, and then we're going to boot him out of there, put him on the move. And uh, you go to the next level. There's two things I'm looking at here. But the throw is what I am looking at. This is, you know, Will Rogers hasn't done this a lot in his college career uh, so far, and that is throwing on a move, off play action, boot, waggles, or sprint out type stuff. And he's rolling to his left, you know, right-handed quarterback. And your options, you know, initially, if you get a bite on the play fake, then you're going to get a wide open flat, just dump it to him and let him run. That's part of the design right there. But the next thing is the tight end coming, you know, bouncing off his delay. And do they cover that? If not, you got to go to the next level, it's kind of the third level of this thing. And what's happening is you got a little leak. Um, this player right here, he's number 48, does a pretty good job and recognizes what's going on in this play. He sees run fake away and then just beats it. Nick Jones is a little bit, he's a little bit out of sync. There's a big gap and just kind of lets him through. And so now he's pressured. Okay, so you're covered out there in the flat. He's already come off. The reason this defender stopped is because he's already brought his eyes off. Now he's here. You don't really have a good window for that, but he's looking through to the next window. And I just really like this job. You know, drop that elbow, turn those hips, try to get that shoulder all the way around, and throw a dart. And for a complete and first down. That is not easy to do. Especially if you got bodies around you. And that is a really good throw. And when you see it from behind, you can really appreciate the accuracy as well. Or, or I can, because uh, you see where the ball's got to be. Up that elbow. And if he leads him, you got a defender here. If he's leading him across, it's either picked or blown up. He's actually put it on his back hip belt away from the defender. And the, the one place it needed to be for this to be a safe completion. That is really, I mean, that's a fine, fine throw right there. Uh, moving to your left, right-handed, flip, dart. That is a really good job. All right, keep your eye on number 14, Mike Wright, transfer quarterback. Let's see the formation. They got eight up there near the line of scrimmage. Pull that tight end out in front, read it, keep it. And off to the races. I'll be interested to go back here and kind of see uh, how it happened. I actually haven't previewed this one, so uh, let's see what we have. Formationally, single back. You've got tight end on the line. You got hip tight in here with Harmon and two receivers. So initially, pre-snap, you've got five eligible receivers and four of them are, uh, excuse me, four of them are on this side of the field. And the ball's actually gonna go away. So let's snap it and see what happens. Yeah, okay, so on the snap, everything is reading it. That's the way it looks to me. Everything is down, down, zoning it back the other way, including with the tight end <clears throat> against this front. And it does help that because of the formation, they have everybody walk down here, right? You got three next level defenders all right here on the back side where the tight ends lined up. Um, and again, to clear the picture, they're all over here lined up pre-snap because you had one tight end, two tight ends. But now on the snap, see, we're bringing one as a lead blocker. And because of the speed of the quarterback, we can read this edge right here. And, uh, you know, again, I, I assume we're reading it. Maybe it's a straight give, but if you are reading it, any sort of movement inside, and you're going to pull that thing, come out here and follow your blocker, and that's what you get. Okay, so he goes in. He's reading it 42s down. Pull it. Follow your lead. You know, he's jumping around the block right here, but see, you know, and this is a really good job by Harmon. You know, people don't understand a lot of times how hard blocking people is, but right here, sometimes a tendency might be, I got to block this guy, and you get held up trying to block him when you realize, man, my guy's fast enough. If he jumps around me, I'm just going to continue to run. So bypass him. We're going to outrun that guy if he's going around the block, which he did. Go find the next one. You know, the only thing, you know, like right here, there's not really a huge reason to look back and see your, your guy. Go find the next guy and make sure you get him off his feet. Um, got a hold of his face mask right there. So you got to block him. You know, I'm sure that uh, it's not a bad play at all, but I'm sure coaches are telling Harmon, hey, look, man, we need you to decleat this fella right here and we score. Uh, one does a pretty decent job to fight through it and get you out of bounds. Third and one down here on the goal line. 
Speed Motion Wally, little dart off the edge, flat route, hit him for a touchdown, outrun the defense. Several things going on that I find neat on this play. Interesting to look at design. Got the edge just outrun to the pylon right there. Um, <clears throat> so formationally, look at State. Got a tight end on the line of scrimmage here and another tight end in the ball game, hip. So this is a double tight formation, only two receivers on the field. And I don't know this, but I think looking at their personnel, because it's third and one in this situation, they go four with their hands down. You got a combination of three linebackers, but I think their personnel here is kind of heavy. I think they've taken a safety out and gotten another heavy in. So, again, I may be wrong, but I think you only have three true DBs on the field for uh, this play because they're kind of thinking run. Everybody bunched up in there. And so, again, this is just trying to look at it. I think this might be sort of an RPO type of play for Will Rogers. He's got several options. This isn't just a call, play, action, throw. I think, you know, he's got the option give, keep, based on what he gets. And when he sees this motion here, speed motion, it's got to happen fast, but immediately you see two things. There's no safety. This doesn't have any sort of look of any sort of zone on this third and one, and, and so you wouldn't expect it. But on speed motion, this defender takes off. He's going to try to go across with him. He's running with him step for step. He's also lined up like man-to-man -man right here. So just pre-snap, like if I see that man, I'm thinking, okay, He's going to slant. That's, this defender's running with him. That gives me the edge up there. And then I'm here, and even if he goes over the top to try to get there, he can't get there. I'm going to give it to him. It's a race to the pylon. That's effectively what happens right here. So whether it's the pre-snap you know, motion read for Will, I don't know, or if it's you know, a certain number of defenders off the edge because you only have one, two, right? That's all you have right now. And maybe it's a numbers thing on pre-snap. And if you only see, you know, a certain number, then it's automatically a pull right here and then make a decision. I don't know how they tell them to read it. I don't. I just know that it adds up. As I'm going here and pre-snap, they've only got one and two out here on the edge. And if I'm on speed motion, my receiver, I did not expect 11 to be able to run him down at the pylon. Plus 11 sort of gets held up back here and just sort of stops. Um, yeah, and if you get this matchup, it's just like extended handoff to the pylon. Touchdown. Good play call. Uh, from behind, you could see the kid for um, Celi running across right here, trying to follow him across the formation. And when he gets to the other side, it, whether it's confusion or what, he stops. And just like passing it off, and now you got no chance. If he had run full speed and never hesitated, there's a chance we get a collision over here at the uh, at the pylon. Here is a block punt. Here's a player for them that's in the shield right here. He's a good football player for them. But he catches the brunt of the full force of John Lewis, 37. Gets flat out knocked back into the leg of the punter and gets it blocked. Uh, and Sledge picks it up. But this is a really physical play here uh, by John Lewis. Uh, 37. And it's one of those I said Sledge should have given this football to John Lewis, let him spike it, whatever it is. I guess that would be a penalty. But on the snap, uh, Lewis is uh, lined up here. Okay, so just, um, you know, for, for defensive purposes, just left of the snapper. You know, he's free to the shield. And now watch it. I mean, he is just full bore. This poor guy's going to catch him. And this is absolutely blowing it up. Boom, knocks him back and blocks the punt all at the same time. I mean, this is really good. And that's a big, strong, really good athlete too, big physical athlete. I think I got high expectations for John Lewis. You see him flash uh, from time to time and it really looks good. Here it is from behind. So get his hands up. That's great awareness, big time play. All right, big run here for Woody Marks, but this is really all about what happens over here on the edge of the line of scrimmage. This is later in the game, fourth quarter, and State got stronger as the game went on, and you really can't say that about uh, southeastern Louisiana. They just collapsed the edge, and here goes Woody. Now, like this, you know, player had a little bit of a—he's he's a bigger player, had a little bit of an angle. So let's see, you know, can you 
can you outrun him up the sideline? Get to the edge and then turn it on at the end. Uh, safety comes over, or was it the corner? Yeah, it's actually the corner who turns back and runs him down. All right, so we're talking about <clears throat> the edge. We'll get two different looks at it, but here's a player. I think this is uh, Lewis. I'll look it up. <laughs> He's 67, but this is an excellent job here on the end. It's tackle and guard sort of comboing up to this next level. Same thing for center and backside guard comboing up to the next level. And the tight end is slamming backside to keep someone from coming in here and cutting it off. Uh, and that's kind of how that works. Do combos, play side, tight end comes back, slam off backside. But it's really the offensive tackle that, that yeah, 67. Or maybe that's Bell. It's 67 Bell. It seems like that's something I ought to know. <laughs> but now, they're new guys. We'll look at it and see. Um, yeah, that's Bell. So you got Lewis on the backside. Bell's your right tackle. So watch this right here. And again, fourth quarter. I'm going to get some playing time. I'm going to make the most of it. Watch what he does. Head up, lean on him, turn him inside, put him on the ground. That's an excellent job right there. The right tackle. Just turn it inside. The soy is up. He's in the way. 30 can already see. And again, you know, you talk about the urgency. Um, slow back if he's hesitating 30 even though he sort of hesitates and jumps the block could make the play but not with Woody first time all day he's gotten a lot of green grass on the edge he's he's ready to roll and so foot race to the edge get there and the corner has to go running down the down the field all right I believe this is called G T counter and that would be guard pulling the G Tackle, pulling the T, and the counter. Step away, come back across, and follow it. I believe that's what you got down here on first and six on the goal line. Here they come, Lasoya, Bell, touchdown. And, uh, yeah, that's what it is. So, uh, State motions across with uh, Tulu to make it three by one pre-snap. So, you've brought a defender up and over where you're going to have three singled up right here safety's off the ball he shouldn't matter from six yards away so really it comes down to six in the box right four and two and what you're doing is uh play side up to the next level uh center up to the next level nobody's blocking this one you're going to make it look like we're reading him and sometimes you probably will read him nobody blocks him he's free to come up you know, and I say the reason you read it is because if you get a guy who just comes and starts to immediately chase across, you'll pull it and go over here and RPO this thing or run it. Um, so let's watch him pull. Across, steps down. Lasoya's going to pull across and pick up here. Bell's going to pull across and pick up next level. That's looking good so far. Excellent job, too, here by... Dollar Bill left tackle who comboed up to the next level. So there's the first one that actually happens. Lasoya, let's do it. one, two, who pulled, and the next one, the job of uh, Bell to get the next one. You pick him up, we're going to walk in the end zone, and there it goes. Freshman Whittemore, speed motion, gets it. Touchdown, out the gate, the other side. Let's just watch it. Um, Tight end is up in front. Receiver on the safety. Back leads on the corner. Here we go. Foot race and win it. All right. And so really, you know, we'll just focus on this. Look at the skill players on the side where the ball is going, okay? Those three guys. So I believe this is Belazar. His job is up on the safety. There's block one. Tight end, his job is around and catch the first on the edge. There's two. And then the back, Lee, his job is up and there. All three of those happen. And the idea is if we can get those, and again, you know, just to show you one, two, and three. If we can get those, then none of this other stuff matters. That's, that's the idea. If we can get those, none of that matters because he's going to be fast enough to outrun anybody who's trying to get to this from the backside of the formation. That's the idea. So we just need, we need skill player blocks on the front side. 
I don't know. I mean, you can definitely read this. Like there are times, and you'll block it in certain ways, where quarterback will read this play side inside. And if they hang, we give. If they fly, then I keep and I'm vertical or keeping out the backside. I don't know if that's a call here. I know you get an edge off, you know, a guy off the edge who's unblocked who would have given you problems if you'd had any kind of keep built in there. But anyway, here we go. So the first thing, keep your eyes on them. Look up the safety. That happens. Uh, tight end chip edge up to the linebacker. This is a nice job by 98. Okay, and this is going to be a really nice job by the back lead, a transfer from Penn State. Arm is out, so could have gotten a hold. If you play in Alabama, they will call that a hold, I promise you. But here it's not, and uh, you go score. All right, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you're still here at the end of this, please do me a favor. Would you consider subscribing to the channel, giving it a like? It really helps me, and it helps the channel. If you like this content, it helps you to make it. And if you would, check me out on Instagram. Consider following me on Instagram at Radio Wyatt. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.